in my last video, I went over the tabs that I used for NDS, but NDS also has a supplement, which is what I will cover in this video. Now the supplement is a lot shorter, so I'll just be going over the tabs here throughout the video that I used and explain why I picked some of them. And I'll say, as I went through these tabs, I got to learn so much more about NDS. So even if your exam is computer-based or you don't have an exam coming up, I think tabbing your manuals, your specifications is really important for just your personal and professional learning. The first tab that I will show here is section properties. This tab is especially important for wood and this is just the first table but there are many more in the following pages because as you know for example a 2 by 4 member is not really 2 inches by 4 inches it is 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches and this is true for essentially everything in wood design so here we get not only the dimensions but also all the different section properties it's a table that I'd say you'd reference 90% of the time you are solving a wood design problem. The second one is I separated these based on the thicknesses because that's how wood is categorized. The first three here are the th thicknesses between two to four inches. Now we have for a bunch of species here, then we have for southern pine, and then we have for all species but they are mechanically graded. The first two, as we are going to see here, they are visually visually graded dimension lumber. And I'd say a lot of wood design is based on on these tables here because I believe they are probably cheaper. And the way that it is organized, you have these different grades here and you can see that the stronger grades are at the top and then as you go down, it'll be a lower grade. I'll say, for example, in design practice, a lot of times, let's say Southern Pine or whatever it is, number two is very used because it's not the strongest one, but it's not the weakest one. So I believe it's just more readily available. And it, it depends on where you are as well. So we have the tab here for Southern Pine because Southern Pine is a special. It gets its own table. And then, like I was saying, the, me the mechanically graded dimension lumber lives in its own table here and you can see that the nomenclature is different so that you don't mix up what's mechanically graded and what's visually graded and I believe these guys here give you a higher capacity because they are just not visually graded they were mechanically graded so they the QAQC process is a bit higher now when you get to a thickness of five inches or more then you're not called a dimension dimension lumber anymore. You're called a timber. So this is for 5x5 five five and larger. And you can see here all the different species. Now there are two key differences here. One, you have beam, beams and stringers and then you have posts and timbers. So they differentiate based on how you're going to use the member. And then I have decking not spe nothing special here just more and more design values that's what the supplement is all about then this table here you may not use it as much here in the US but if you ever come come across a project that you're using species that are not from North America you may want to check out this table here and see if maybe Douglas fir from France or Germany uh, you can get your design values from here you may not use frequently, but it's good to know that it exists. Now we get into the glue lamb or glue laminated beams here. One, two, three, four. I have four tabs. And the difference between the four tabs is the first two are for soft woods, the second two for hard woods. And then between each one of them, we have a table just for beams and then a table for members in tension and compression and the same for hardwoods. So I'll open one of them here to show you what these tables typically look like. Of course, we typically have the design values be before the table shown here. And then for glue, glue lamb or glued laminated timber, we have a summary table 
and then we have a more elaborate table with a lot of design values here. That's the same for the other tabs and you can see that it's pretty much the same here. You have some adjustment factors, the summary table, and then the more detailed, the more detailed table. Lastly, I have piles and poles, which is the last table here for some more design values. I hope this helped you expedite your learning about wood design, but wait a minute, it's not done yet. We tabbed two books, right, related to wood design, but NDS couldn't keep everything to one book, so we actually have a third one, that is this guy here, Speedwiz, how it's commonly known here in the US. These are special design provisions for wind and seismic with the commentary. In my next video, I'll be going over the tabs that I used for this guy. And I'll see you next time.